Hi, it's Peg and Des on Couples Therapy. So this is the episode where we see the aftermath of the Joe Flavor Flav argument. It's time for some reconciliation. Right. Dr. Jen realizes some kind of ruckus went on, pulls each of them separately into a room and says, what happened? And Flav, which was kind of surprising to me, was very contrite about the situation. He seemed to talk about it in a reasonable fashion. He said that he was apologetic for his behavior and he was willing to have a conversation with Joe. But then we see Joe come in the room <laughs> and Joe says, basically Joe is talking to us on some, I'm absolutely not interested in speaking to Flav. Like that was just his right. whole attitude. Right. Joe's angry at Flav and he's been angry at Flav for a while. Yes. And that was what that fight was about. And he was not ready. He had not expelled all his anger during the argument. He walked into that room with Dr. Jen very angry. And I thought it was very fortuitous that they had that argument while in therapy because they could actually do sort of this, you know, therapeutic conversation with Dr. Jen about what happened and, you know, how they can move forward from this. Like, that doesn't happen in real life. Imagine if this happened on some other reality show. It probably, somebody would have laid some hands, but the right. thing is, is Joe also got into his one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Jen and just said some really disgusting things like, you know, yes. if I wanted to spend time around people like Flav, I'd go down to the homeless shelter like I do on Thanksgiving. He, he just makes hella disrespectful. He just makes some really filthy comments about people that let yeah. us know that he truly believes he's better than others. You know how some people may have an idea in their minds, you know, I'm in this part of society, they're in that part of society. Joe allows that foolishness to just sweat from his glands. Well, I mean, Joe seems to forget how he made his money. Joe is just consumed with the fact that he's rich, right? And somehow that makes him above everyone else. He really he's acts in like the he gutter, yeah. just like all of them. He, yeah. You were in the gutter, Joe. He really acts like he made his money. I don't know, finding cancer cures. I mean, it, right. it, is, it is astounding how indignant he is about how he came to fame and wealth. Yes. So Dr. Jen, I guess, gets to a point where she thinks, all right, I think you guys are both ready to come into a room together. Again, Flavor Flav walks in as gracious as could be, tries to shake Joe's hand, sincerely looks him in the eye and says, look, I really apologize. And Joe is stank as hell. Flav even made a comment about it. He was like, Dr. Jen, I, you know, that energy right there. I know you felt that, Dr. Jen, that energy. I just tried to shake that man's hand. And Flav is right. Yeah. I came into the space with an open heart. You're right. closed off. And then Joe hits us with, I'm willing to accept your apology if you behave. I know. And what? I was like, who do you think you are? Even Flav and Flav reared back at that. He was like, what do you mean by behave? Exactly. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, he's, he's horrible, Joe. Francis. And then the last thing I'm going to say about the apology that really wasn't no. is that Joe also apologized on behalf of Abby. So Abby's sitting there looking simple and hungry, and she did something to Flav that she shouldn't have done. She threw some strawberries in the trash can. She participated in the melee, and Joe apologizes for her, speaking for her. And I'm like, does this girl do anything independently? No, she's not allowed to speak around Joe. Just like they said last week, I believe it was the last episode where they talked about how when Joe's around, she doesn't open her mouth, and if she says anything, she looks to him to check and see, right. is that okay, did I say it okay? She's under his thumb, he's she a bully. A geisha girl. Yes, he's a terrible bully, and I hope he gets his uh, comeuppance at some point. So let's move on to talk about Chingy is holding out on Temple, apparently. Yes. Not giving it up to Temple. Chingy has been abstinent for 21 days. Right, and said not a word about it to Temple. Temple is just finding out that the reason that they aren't having sex is because he's decided to be abstinent. And Temple, <laughs> interestingly enough, so, so everyone's looking at Abby on the show as the woman who cannot express herself. And Temple has even said on a couple of occasions, Abby, you should speak up for yourself. But Temple, when are you going to admit that you don't really speak up for yourself? Because when you were sitting there and Dr. Jin was asking Temple about the fact that she and Chingy are not having sex, 
Temple didn't even want to articulate what the problem was. She's like, you know, it, it's just kind of nice to have a little affection, or <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, and just. Uh, uh. Chingy was. Lee looked unconcerned. He was like, couldn't care. Not my problem. He was like, you see that right there? I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I don't care because when I want some and she doesn't want any, then I'm the one that has to deal with it. But just because she wants some, I'm gonna withhold it from her. And then that's when Dr. Mike let him know, my dude, that's all about power. I love Dr. Mike, and he's absolutely right. I don't think Cheney's holding out because he suddenly decided to become abstinent. Please better himself and his spiritual soul or whatever he is trying to get power in that relationship and he's doing it by not giving it up to temple and i and, and i think that that relationship it's very quietly dysfunctional it's not like these other relationships like you know abby and joe or Flav and right. his girl it's quietly sadly messed up it is it is that kind of misery when you live in a household with somebody and y'all don't speak but you think about stabbing them <laughs> like that is the chingy temple relationship to me that is oh, really I, what that is i know that feeling so well <laughs> so well <laughs> so i don't expect the two of them to make it down anybody's aisle anytime so no put it I, that way i don't i don't think that relationship is going to last so Let's talk about expressive therapy. Yes. So we saw this week, they took them down to the junkyard and said, here's a hammer, have a swing. Right. Let your anger out. Tyler went first and basically swung on his proverbial father. Right. I, I'm not a big fan of the expressive therapy. I really didn't, don't think it does anything. I think it's fun to yell and scream and knock at things, but I don't think it really does anything for you. You don't feel like there's any kind of like um, stress release that comes with that? In the same way that you may go and run six miles, if I ran six miles, but you know, the way you would if you- How do you know if, about running six miles? Please, girl, listen, you know, listen. Listen, I'll I drive that, six miles to relieve my stress. If you are upset about something in the moment, I do think that maybe hitting something with a hammer might be a stress reliever. But you're upset about something that happened 20 years ago and now you're swinging a hammer today? No, don't buy it. So wait, right. there's a statute of limitations on swinging a hammer? Yes, I believe so. I can't. Well, Joe Francis agrees with me. He didn't want to do it, but he didn't want to do it not because he doesn't agree with expressive therapy, but because he was concerned about showing up on the suit. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then tried to put Temple out there as right. if Temple was the one that said the comment about being on the suit. First of all, not only was the camera able to record that interaction so hey. we knew we knew that he was lying. Oh my dude. But even if the camera didn't record that interaction, I still know that Temple would never say something like that because she would never be on the suit. Right. Who cares about Who Temple? Who cares about Temple? <laughs> so why in the world would Joel McHale have anything to say about you on a Wednesday evening? I have no idea. Right. So so Joe is very transparently lying, but he quickly changes his tune when Dr. Jen brings out a special item for Abby, a scale. Yes. Brings that out. The old school doctor scale. Right. And all of a sudden, Joe's like, you gotta do it, Abby. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Abby's like, okay, I'll do it. Watching Abby wield that hammer was like watching a malnourished child in an African diamond mine. <laughs> I was like, why are we putting this girl through this? She clearly has no strength to swing that hammer. Well, uh, interestingly enough, I thought that she had a much more valid reason for not swinging the hammer in that she doesn't like to lose control and that there was an emotional, she had sort of emotional issues with that. I mean, I can get why Dr. Jen said, well, you have to face that, but I feel like her reason was more valid, and yet she's the one that had to go swing the hammer. Yes. <laughs> I, I felt bad for her. But let's talk about who didn't need any convincing to swing anything. When they called Liz's name, Liz was up. It wasn't even like, <laughs> they, nobody had to say, you know, Liz, come on up and, and, and make sure to talk during it. Liz was up. She was ready. She was talking through it and throwing dishes all across the, she was throwing dishes like a Greek wedding. Was it me? But I didn't understand what Liz was angry about. I didn't actually hear what her problem was. Did you, she was, she was like, how could you be so stupid? Bah! She was like, how could you do that to me? Bah! I can't believe you would do that. Bah! Right. And I think that she was talking about the flavor of love stuff. I think right. she is so 
hurt and angry. Oh, and then she also had another one. I was pregnant. Ah! So, <laughs> so she was she was really going in on those dishes. I can't really understand all of what Liz says through the drug haze, but that might just be me. So okay, she she did. She was a star. Uh, junkyard um, <laughs> basher of dishes and, and everything. Um, Alright, so we'll see what goes on next week. Next week is the big blow up with Joe and Heather and Dustin. I can't wait for that. Joe has new victims. Right, new victims. Moving on. Um, okay, so please subscribe to our channel and like our videos and also follow us on Twitter at Peg and Des. And make sure to catch our other videos on mistresses and basketball wives. Bye. Goodbye.